The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Today, no war has been declared. And however fierce the struggle may be, it may never be declared in the traditional fashion. Our way of life is under attack. Those who make themselves our enemy are advancing around the globe. The survival of our friends is in danger. And yet no war has been declared. No borders have been crossed by marching troops. No missiles have been fired. If the press is awaiting a declaration of war before it imposes the self-discipline of combat conditions, then I can only say that no war ever posed a greater threat to our security. If you are awaiting a finding of clear and present danger, then I can only say that the danger has never been more clear and its presence has never been more imminent. It requires a change in outlook, a change in tactics, a change in missions by the government, by the people, by every businessman or labor leader, and by every newspaper. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. Formally acknowledged as the Star of David, the move to adopt this symbol for the flag of Israel angered many Jews who realized that the symbol is in fact not the Star of David, but a hexagram symbol that was used in the ancient mystery religions. Many anti-Zionist Jews have since gone on to participate in annual flag burning rituals. It is in the biblical figure of Solomon that we can trace the true origins of the six-pointed star or hexagram. Solomon called the star the talisman of Saturn or what became known as the seal of Solomon. As we see the bull's head is enclosed in a six-pointed star and surrounded by the letters composing the name Remthan, the planetary genius of Saturn according to the alphabet of the Meiji. The bull represents Moloch worship which we will look at shortly but first we need to examine two passages from the Bible that provide more detail on Solomon. Kings 11 1 to 5 in the Bible features this passage. But King Solomon loved many foreign women as well as the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidonians and Hittites from the nations of whom the Lord had said to the children of Israel, You shall not intermarry with them, nor they with you. Surely they will turn away your hearts after their gods. Solomon clung to these in love, and he had 700 wives, princesses and 300 concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it was so, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned his heart after other gods and his heart was not loyal to the Lord, his God, as was the heart of his father David. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Ashtoreth here is a female goddess and the same goddess as Ishtar in Babylon, Isis in Egypt, the Romans called her Diana, and the Greeks Artemis, and the symbol is Venus. Milcom here is a male god, 
and its root word means king or Baal. It is the same god that is referred to as Moloch, or Nimrod in Babylon, Osiris in Egypt, Baal in Sidon. There are overlaps with Zeus in Greek culture and Jupiter in Roman culture. The symbol is Saturn. As the passage makes clear, Solomon fell in love with the women of Egypt and began to worship these false gods. Two other passages from the Bible directly reference the symbol of the star or the seal of Solomon or the talisman of Saturn. But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chion your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. In another passage, just before being stoned to death by the Jews, Stephen accused the Jewish leaders, and you took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your God Remthan, the figures which you made in order to worship them. As you see, the star in the Bible is directly correlated with the god Moloch and Renthan. Renthan is another word for Saturn. If you study the geometry of the star, you realize it has six points, forms six equilateral triangles and its interior forms a six-sided hexagon. The six points, six triangles and six sides of the hexagon equate to 666 the specific number that the Bible designated as the mark of the beast or Lucifer's number. As Revelation states, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred threescore and six. Kings in the Bible specifically link Solomon with this number. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 600 free score and 6 talents of gold. The Bible specifically states that it was Solomon that used the star and not David. In fact, there is no evidence that David was ever associated with a star. We've seen how Freemasonry had been infiltrated and overtaken by the Rothschild Illuminati agenda. Here is what Albert Pike, a Freemason in the 1800s, said about the secret society. Masonry is a search after light. That search leads us directly back, as you see, to the Kabbalah. Kabbalah is the key of the occult sciences. The true philosophy known and practiced by Solomon is the basis on which Masonry is founded. It is not only Albert Pike himself who reveals the links between Freemasonry, Solomon and the Kabbalah. The symbolism of Freemasonry and the Illuminati all overlap with recurring themes of Saturn and the numerology of 666. You see, what Pike is really referring to here is the occult practices of Solomon that are traced back to ancient Egypt and Babylon and that secretly worship the god of Saturn, or otherwise known as Moloch or Baal, or Nimrod. In 2012, NASA released yet another CGI image, this time of Saturn's North Pole. In addition to looking very fake and absurd, the image presents the world with what is termed as Saturn's hexagon. As you can see, when connecting the lines within a six-sided hexagon, it produces other shapes. First that of a cube, by joining three lines, and then that of a six-pointed star or hexagram by joining six lines. Studying the root word of Kabbalah, I soon realized that Kaaba in Arabic means cube and Allah means God. Therefore, the literal translation of Kabbalah in Arabic means cube God. And then it dawned on me, I had seen the cube before. In fact, I had seen it everywhere. Here is the cube, or Kaaba, in Mecca that forms part of Muslim worship. As you can see, those worshipping the cube form circles around it, much like the rings of Saturn. Here are Orthodox Jews in their morning prayer, using the tefillin, or the black cube with scrolls inside attached to their foreheads. Here is the Pope, with the six-pointed seal of Solomon on his hat. Interestingly, if you take the 2D shape of the crucifix and begin to fold it into a 3D shape, it produces a cube. In Hinduism, the hexagram is more commonly known as Shakkon. It is the union of Shiva, who represents the male, and Shakti, 
who represents the female. Hindus also refer to Shiva as Kabbalah Ishwara, the Lord of the Kabbalah. And did you know that there are huge monuments to the black cube throughout the world? Here is a 9-11 memorial from above. An inverted black cube within another inverted black cube. Furthermore, the Saturn symbolism is not just specific to religions and memorials. Even the everyday life of a so-called atheist is rife with Saturn symbolism. And this is not just limited to the cube itself or the star. The rings of Saturn populate our everyday world. We all live by the symbol of Saturn without realizing it. The symbol of Saturn is inextricable from the number six. Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun in the heliocentric model. Also, Saturn day, or what we now refer to as Saturday, is the sixth day. If you look closer at the Freemason square and compass, it is indeed a broken six star hexagram. When linking the letters that spell Mason on the one dollar bill, you get a six pointed hexagram with the Eye of Providence, or the Eye of Horus, specifically highlighted. Horus, again Egyptian gods. Saturn has also become inextricable with Satan or Lucifer. As Manly P. Hall writes, Saturn has also been associated with Satan, and this for numerous reasons. First, many authors argue that the word Satan is derived from the word Saturn. Second, Saturn is associated with the color black, as well as Satan. Third, ancients considered Saturn to be the furthest planet from the sun, the latter being associated with the principle of good. Saturn is consequently the celestial body that is the less exposed to the sun's divine light, and thus associated with the coldness of the principle of evil. Finally, the great god Pan, the horned deity represented Saturn in ancient paganism. This half-man, half-goat creature is considered the ancestor of our modern depictions of Satan. Pan was a composite creature, the upper part, with the exception of his horns, being human, and the lower part in the form of a goat. The pipes of Pan signify the natural harmony of the spheres, and the god himself is a symbol of Saturn because this planet is enthroned in Capricorn, whose emblem is a goat. The pagan Pan also has other guises such as Baphomet, the half-goat, half-human, who has associations with Satan and Moloch. Like Saturn, Illuminati Freemasonry symbolism is prevalent throughout our society in the form of corporate logos and, as Albert Pike said, Freemasonry is the following of the philosophy of Solomon. It is also inextricable from the symbolism of Satanism. Here are some of the most recognized corporate logos we come across in our society today. Rebranding of old Masonic symbols and the emphasis on 666. 666 or the mark of the beast is repeated throughout corporate symbolism. For instance, World Wide Web or WWW in Jewish Gematria is 666. It is also used for the logo of the Monster Energy Drinks. It is also a recurring motif along with the single one eye of providence. Many celebrities and politicians have been photographed making the 666 hand sign around the eyes. The sign forms a six and the three fingers indicates three score, or in other words, 666. Zechariah 11.17 mentions the eye in specific reference to straying from God and into Satan worship. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean dried up and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. And as we see again, many celebrities and famous people cover in one eye, a gesture paying homage to the eye of Horus, the eye of Providence and the darkened right eye of Satan. We also see many make the Horn of Canuto hand sign representative of Satan.
The symbolism is literally everywhere. For instance, why does the Vatican's hall look like a serpent? What are the dark serpent-like figures behind the throne? And why was the Vatican's telescope initially named Lucifer? I could go on and on about the abundance of satanic, Saturn symbols in our culture. From the prevalence of Egyptian monuments to secret gestures such as the vow of silence and the Masonic one hidden hand. But I think you get the point. And there is a wealth of information out there if you want to pursue your own research. This video is only supposed to be a very basic overview of this type of symbolism. It becomes confusing because the same symbol of Saturn or Satan keeps appearing in different eras and cultures under different guises. Much like Bauer changed his name to Rothschild, the worship of Saturn has undergone so many different iterations and changes that it becomes difficult to track. I feel that this is deliberately so. And this is the point. What the Rothschilds achieve with their centralized banking and Illuminati cabal establishment of controlled leaders in every industry, such as fossil fuels, health and education, is a highly disguised and masterly executed form of infiltration. They have controlled our access to knowledge from the beginning. The Natural History Museum at Tring belonged to second Baron Rothschild and is located in a Rothschild family home. The League of Nations organized the inception of the Central Natural History Museum. E.L. Rothschild Limited, a private funded family investment company and established by Sir Evelyn de Rothschild and Lynn Forrester de Rothschild, oversees a variety of Rothschild's global investments. The company currently has interests in media, real estate, agriculture and luxury goods, with a significant previous positions in financial services, technology and communications. They even own 70% of Weather Central and all of its communications. As of today, the Rothschilds own over 160 central banks and control the finances of the majority of nations on Earth. In the year 2000, there were only a few countries that did not have centrally established banks. Any nation that resists their desire to control is demonized through the media and is usually bombed under the pretense of war or terrorism. Is this starting to make sense yet? As we saw in the previous episode, all wars are deliberately choreographed, as are all politics. The opposing forces of the political left and right is all theatre to produce the illusion of choice. They are all players on the world stage whose autonomy and real governing power is limited by the elite powers such as the Rothschilds. It is the same with corporations, products and the media. The illusion of choice when in fact they are all owned by the same top of the pyramid companies that are in the pockets of the Rothschild elite. You can discover this yourselves by just following the money. The primary aim of the Illuminati cabal is to establish a Novus Ordo Seclorum as stated on the one dollar bill and which means a new order of the ages or a new world order. The agenda of this order is to establish a globalist one world government with a world military, centralized banking, health, education and religion. Here we can see the former Israeli president Shimon Peres, a Rothschild puppet, meeting with the Pope to discuss uniting all religions under one world religion. And I can bet you that the one world religion would carry the symbol of Saturn. Again, I will not go into much depth about globalism and the New World Order agenda. There is a wealth of material on the internet if you are interested. The Rothschilds and the Rockefellers are just one of the many governing Kabbalah elite families that run and rule our world. Doing justice to the complexity of this would require its own video series. My main objective is to give you a brief overview of the Rothschild's power complex and its grip on our world and to show you the prevalence of satanic symbolism that stems from this power complex as it is the key to understanding the lie behind the heliocentric model of the Earth and why they would deliberately hide that our Earth is a flat, disc-like plane. 
Despite being studied and used by different Jewish sects today, the Kabbalah is not exclusively Jewish. It has ties that go beyond Judaism. Jewish mysticism originated with the apostate Israelites and ancient Egypt and Canaan during the time of the serpent religions of the Ammonites, the Canaanites and Egyptians, all of which trace back to Babylon. And, as I have shown you, this is evident in the symbolism. Does this mean that Orthodox Kabbalah Jews secretly worship Saturn or Satan? No. What the Rothschilds and their puppets have successfully achieved is a worldwide worship of Saturn or Satan in its various guises through deception and infiltration without the world knowing it. I am not suggesting that Jews in general worship Satan, especially in their study of the Kabbalah, nor am I suggesting that Muslims in their prayer to the Kaaba or Catholics visiting the Vatican are Satanists. I am showing you that without actually knowing it, we are all in some way giving our energy and worship to this satanic lineage without realizing it. Even if you're an atheist, the black cube and Saturn rings are so prevalent in your life you may wear clothing with the symbolism on without even realizing. It is now important to return to the Big Bang. As I mentioned in the previous episode, the Kabbalah Ensof provides us two conclusions, that either the Big Bang has proven the Kabbalah and its teachings, or that the Big Bang theory was stolen from the Kabbalah. But you see, perhaps there is an even more sinister conclusion behind this. Perhaps, just perhaps, modern Kabbalists, or more specifically the Illuminati Freemasonry Satanic Complex, have figured out a way to force their beliefs onto others by renaming their views as science. Perhaps atheism is not atheism at all, but a deceptive form of Satan, Saturn worship, which encourages people to forsake the idea of God and creation and adopt randomness, nihilism or the idea of nothingness and is achieved through none other than widespread institutional control and infiltration of the sciences via the Rothschilds, Rockefellers and other puppets. And when met with any opposition is shamed from the so-called scientific community. In a nutshell, atheism legitimized coincidence what about all the central scientific figures supporting the heliocentric model and the theory of the Big Bang? Well, here is a photo of Zionist Albert Einstein dining with Lord Rothschild. Isaac Newton was a Freemason and had a keen interest in the occult. And all big NASA figureheads and astronauts are Freemasons and openly display this, as does Neil deGrasse Tyson. There exists an organization called the Anti-Defamation League, which serves as an instrument to try and convince everyone that any mention of the Rothschilds and their allies is an anti-Semitic attack on all Jews. This is given historical weighting by the Rothschild Choreograph Holocaust and also controlled by the Rothschild Rockefeller Media Complex. All major mainstream media outlets can be traced back to their control. As David Rockefeller stated at the Bilderberg Conference in 1991, are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lights of publicity during those years. But the world is now more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranatural sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. The official controlled narrative states that the Rothschilds are Jews. They are not. They are Satanists. Satanism is the hidden religion that rules the world and its presence is so prevalent and insidiously woven into the fabric of our everyday lives it is shocking. Its method of control primarily centers around deceit. Just as the Mossad phrase states, by way of deception thou shalt do war. And I want you to really marinate on this. Imagine 
If you are that powerful that you literally own the majority of nations on earth and most of the world's GDP, if you had an agenda, is there anything that would be able to prevent you? Would people in power or of fame be able to speak out against you without it having dire consequences? Really consider that kind of wealth and power. It is becoming more and more evident. We have been deceived on the true nature of our earth. And I understand that what I am telling you probably sounds just as ludicrous and ridiculous as when I first mentioned that the earth is flat. And I know you are on the brink of turning this off and writing it off as garbage conspiracy theory. But let me tell you this, conspiracies are real. It's the lack of evidence that makes them a theory. Stay with me. As I said before, you cannot tell people the truth. You must show them. Do not take my word for it. I cannot just make claims that there is an elite body of people that worship Satan and have operated throughout time by deceiving the common people as to the true nature of the world and that they have full control over all the information we receive. Prevalent Satan symbolism and the history of the Rothschilds is not enough proof or evidence. If Satanism is real, then I need to show you the true evil of such worship before I show you what they are covering up with NASA. Come with me now to part 7. We are nearly through this rabbit hole.